Hi everybody, Sandy Boucher here and welcome back to my world. It's Saturday, as you can tell by my ensemble here. This is what Sandy looks like <laughs> when I'm not working. It's hair up in a ponytail and comfy clothes and just relaxing in my living room. Uh, if you've been following my blog post, you know I haven't been feeling well the last couple of days, so I've really been taking it easy today. But one of the things I've always loved doing on a Saturday is kind of cleaning out my office. Not really working, but organizing, putting things away to be filed. I was going to say filing, but my admin assistant would jump on here and correct me if I said I was filing. Oh, and by the way, uh, this is Oreo. My, my kitty cat. Um, I'm sitting on my living room floor, as you can tell. So, of course, Oreo is going to join in this video. It's a very relaxing day, which is why I chose to do this video in my living room, because I came across something in my office that really sums up my work and sums up the message that I try so hard to get out there. I've often said that my job, I spend so much of my career translating. And I always find that interesting or, or bizarre because I'm speaking English. I work with people, indigenous people in northern communities who are speaking English, or at least when I'm there, because they know I wasn't gifted my language for a lot of very personal reasons but or I'm working with mainstream and helping them to understand the northern communities and just how different the two worlds are. One of the reasons I got into this work is I was often hearing people say, well, why don't they just do that? Or why don't they just do this when they were talking about the economic situation or the social situation in the northern communities? And so often those questions or those suggestions just really highlight a lack of information because so many solutions that are free and easy for privileged people like me, and I'm putting myself on the privileged side of this fence right now because I can hop on the internet anytime I want and my kids got to come home after school every night and even if I wanted to go to college or university, I could do that in my same hometown. Uh, that's not the case for people in the northern communities. Oh, my cat's not impressed with me right now. Anyways, the point of this video, I came across this bag of folded papers, as you can see. It's an icebreaker exercise for a seminar. It's very low tech, as you can see, because when you're flying into the communities, you always got to be conscious of the weight restrictions on the airplane. You can only bring so much stuff, so you've got to keep it simple. And there's no high tech in the northern communities. If they have internet access, it's like dial up access. Forget streaming a video as part of your presentation. So this icebreaker, the idea is you pass it around and they reach in and they ask, there's a question on the piece of paper and they answer it. And this is a mainstream icebreaker. I did not create this. This was something that I got out of an icebreaker book and I haven't really used it. And today I thought I had set it aside because I knew I had to review it, translate it before I could use it in the Northern community. And today I ran through the questions and as I was considering them, I thought, you know what, I just need to share this with you so that you guys can understand as well. Can you hear Oreo? She's out on the balcony talking to the birds, I guess, meowing her head off. So the first question, for example, if you could watch your favorite TV show right now, what would it be? We're talking about communities that don't have access to cable, that don't have access to 100 different TV channels. That's question would probably highlight that fact. So, nope, I don't think I'd be comfortable asking that. Next question. If money and time was no object, what would you be doing right now? Well, I'm often speaking to people that have all the time in the world and definitely don't know what having money is like. And even if they did, the things they could spend it on would be incredibly limited unless they ordered it off the internet and prayed it could fit on a plane and they could afford the incredible shipping charges. So yeah, I don't think I'd be comfortable asking that one either. 
So what do we have next? Next question. If you could change anything about yourself, what would you change? I'm in northern communities often wracked by suicide epidemics. I wouldn't want to ask this question because it would probably break my heart to hear the answer. I work with people who want to change everything about themselves, who struggle to see themselves as having any kind of worth. That's the work I do to help remind them that creator made them beautiful and sacred and they are worth so much more than a comparison to mainstream. So no, I wouldn't be asking that one either. There's gotta be some in here I can ask. If you had to be allergic to something, what would it be? Okay, that might be funny to ask. So yeah, I could ask that one. Next one, what would the next question be? If you were sent to live on a space station for three months and only allowed to bring three personal items with you, what would you take? I might change that up a bit. If you were sent to live in the city for three months and only allowed to take three personal items with you, on the other hand, that might be a little too close to life to be fun for an icebreaker. And I'm not sure on that one. I think that one's going to go in the no pile. What's next here? If you could wish one thing to come true this year, what would it be? If I was doing this as an anonymous exercise where they could write down their answer and not have to admit it, yeah, I could ask that. Preparing myself for what could be heartbreaking answers. Good morning, Patty. I'm so glad you joined me. What's the next question? If I gave you $10,000, what would you spend it on? Interesting. I might ask that question. I might be very interested to find out what that question would be or the answers would be. If you could have any question answered, what would it be? Oh, yes. Realizing that there might be youth in the northern communities asking why so many people hate us. And I've had that asked by like 10 years old, 10 year olds and 12 year olds. Welcome to my world. We're almost done here, a few more questions. If you could live in any period in history, when would it be? This is one of the questions that actually made me wanna do this video because I was thinking about history as it's written and excuse the expression, but it's written about a whole bunch of white people. I don't know if my indigenous audience could even relate to any one of those periods. They're never, definitely not gonna picture themselves in an 18th century ball gown. I think I'm gonna pass on that question. Next one, just threw one on the floor. If you could do your dream job 10 years from now and be great at it, what would it be? I've actually used this question in seminar, again, anonymously, because lateral violence is a real thing. If you don't know what that is, do yourself a favor and look it up. And it's amazing to see youth identify that they want to be a biologist or they want to be a teacher or a police officer or they want to be a reporter, a journalist. I've, I've had all those answers. So, yeah, I'm keeping that one. If you could buy a car right now, what would you buy? Okay. I'm thinking it's possible. You can bring vehicles up on the winter road. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to ask that question though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm leaving that one out. And let's see, if you could be someone else, who would you be? Totally not asking that question. When I'm working so hard to get them to love who they are, I'm definitely not asking them who else they would rather be. If you had one day deliver over again, what day would you pick? What if they don't have a day they'd like to live over? What if they have no idea what a good day would be like? I'm going to pass on that question. Two more. If you could learn any skill, what would it be? Well, that, that would be a good, that's not a bad one. And last but not least, if you could talk to anyone in the world, who would it be? Interesting except that their access to people. I mean, anyone in the world, what if their world is only their community? That's all they've ever known. Might be nice because I'd be willing to get 
willing to bet that someone identified their grandmother or their great grandmother who's passed on or their grandfather or their dad who they miss any one of their parents yeah the reality is my work touches your heart you can't go into the communities and stay in your head because everything that happens up there there are so many beautiful souls that need the rest of us to understand a little bit more which is exactly why I did this video so for those of you in the northern communities or from a northern community my heart goes out to you you are stronger and more beautiful than you can even imagine and if you need help remembering that then you just send me a message just go to sandyboucher.com, hit contact me, and I'll be there for you. And for all the other people who live lives of privilege, let's remember that before we make crazy suggestions about what they could do. Until next time, I'm going to go continue cleaning my room and finding my cat. Now, she's sun tanning on the balcony. I might just join her. Until next time, I love you guys. Bye-bye.